Hey everybody, Smart Silver Stacker here. Today is Wednesday, July 27th, 2022. A big day in the markets. The Fed just announced that they'll be hiking the federal funds rate by 75 basis points. And thus far, markets and the precious metals also reacting pretty favorably to this news. And I will be putting a video out shortly to discuss the Fed's rate hike and what that means for gold and silver. But today, I want to talk about the geopolitical tensions that we are seeing rise around the world. Because while things have obviously been fairly tense throughout 2022, what with you know the onset of what could potentially turn into World War III and all that, it seems like right now things are reaching a bit of a fever pitch. And this is very important for the gold and silver market because... War is a highly inflationary event. In fact, it is probably one of the most inflationary events that can occur. And historically, wars often mark the end of a monetary paradigm, especially major worldwide wars. And they also can mean the end of a given world reserve currency system. Just take a look at the British pound, for example. That was the de facto world currency for a while there, but then following the First and the Second World War, the British were so indebted and they had spent so much money waging those wars that the pound lost its world reserve status, even though they were victorious in those conflicts. And also, look at the Weimar hyperinflation. You know, that's one that we like to talk about a lot, an economic event that is very important for gold and silver stackers because it gives you a good example of what can happen to a fiat currency following a conflict, especially one that one loses. And it wasn't just in Weimar, Germany, following World War I that they had that hyperinflation. In the U.S. too, we felt the effects with the Roaring Twenties. And that, of course, turned into the Great Depression. The Roaring Twenties brought on by the great expansion of credit and fiat currency by the U.S. during the First World War. And so all of this is very important to precious metals market. And what is going on? You know, what am I talking about? Well, we've got Nancy Pelosi now planning a trip to Taiwan, and China has promised a forceful response if she goes through with this trip to the island. And if she were to go, it would be the highest ranking U.S. official to visit Taiwan since 1997. So certainly it would be a meaningful trip. And in response to the Chinese threats of a forceful response to this visit, what are we doing? Well, we're going to send the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier strike group to accompany Pelosi on her trip and to provide coverage for her flight and also just to kind of hang around in the vicinity in case anything should happen. And the danger of the situation in Taiwan is that it's getting to a point where neither side can really back down without losing face. Uh, the Chinese, if Pelosi visits and they don't have some kind of a forceful response, they're going to look like they're just full of hot air. And then if she cancels her trip, which... The president says the military has been advising her to do, meaning the military has been advising her to cancel the trip. If she does that, it looks like we're also backing down in the face of Chinese threats. So, not a good situation. And it's not just in Southeast Asia that we've got these conflicts brewing. Of course, there's the ongoing conflict in Ukraine. But in addition to that, Russian gas giant Gazprom just inked a $40 billion deal to help develop Iran's gas fields, their natural gas fields. And Iran has the second largest reserves of natural gas in the world, following Russia. And this comes at the same time that Iran has been sending military drones to the Russians to help in that conflict in Ukraine. Also, the Iranians have put in a bid to join the BRICS nations. And you know, it's not just Iran there. Also, it's uh, Egypt, Saudi Arabia, Argentina, and Turkey are also interested in joining the BRICS. So, you know, we're starting to see the lines drawn here between East and West. And, you know, it is awfully interesting that Turkey is considering joining the BRICS nation, considering they were supplying drones to the Ukrainians, and they're a NATO member. And I mentioned that in a recent video, and someone in the comments said they didn't think Turkey was a member of NATO. Yeah, they are. They've been a member since 1952. But now they're going to be part of the Western Military Alliance, but the Eastern Economic Alliance, if they do go through with this bid to join the BRICS nation. So certainly, 
the lines are being drawn, but they're a little blurry in some places, like over in Turkey. And the fact that Russia now is going to be able to control those Iranian gas reserves through this deal with Gazprom, it means that the Russians are going to control a tremendous amount of the world's energy capacity. And they're using that control already to squeeze Europe. They've now cut the flows of gas through the Nord Stream 1 pipeline to about 20% of its capacity. Now, that is the pipeline that was shut down a couple weeks ago for maintenance and there was all this speculation that the Russians might not open it back up and Europe is implementing all of these gas saving measures and energy saving measures but then the Russians did resume flows so everybody thought everything was okay now it was only operating at about 40 percent of capacity and that's because of these ongoing issues with maintenance at least that's what Russia claims you know the Germans say it's all political but now they have slashed the flows by about half. It was flowing at about 40%. Now it's down to 20%. So we are seeing natural gas prices and energy prices in Europe continue to spike up. There is an ongoing energy crisis there. And this is going to get a lot worse when we get to the winter, when they need all of that gas to heat their buildings. And I don't know what's going to happen exactly in Europe this winter, but it's not going to be good. And likely the price of energy is going to spike up drastically and that is going to cause a tremendous economic recession there and i think we all know what that's going to be met with a lot of stimulus they're going to be printing a lot of currency and that is why i am taking advantage of these low prices that we're seeing in gold and silver and purchasing them because the printing isn't going to be relegated to europe but again i'll be doing a video to cover all of the economic side of things in the near future. Right now, I do want to stick to the geopolitical conflicts because there's quite a few of them. I'd like to say a big thank you to channel sponsor Silver Botanicals, personal care and household products that utilize the power of nano silver and natural essential oils. If you haven't checked them out yet, definitely head over to the Silver Botanicals website with the link down in the description. You can save 10% off of your order there with coupon code STACKER. And we've got a great promotion for the month of July and of August now. We've extended the promotion. If you order $50 or more worth of Silver Botanicals products, you will receive a free 90% silver dime in one of these cards made by Dean over at Silver Botanicals. And really the products at Silver Botanicals are awesome. They've got everything from room freshening spray to deodorant to mouthwash, all sorts of natural, non-toxic personal care products that utilize the antimicrobial power of silver. And if you like these videos that I put out and you want to support the channel, one of the best ways to do that is to support the sponsors of the channel. So head over to silverbotanicals.com today. I ran also recently... In addition to partnering up with Russia on this gas project, they've announced that they now have the capability to produce a nuclear weapon, that they can refine enough uranium to make a nuke. They haven't done it yet, though, or at least they haven't made the announcement that they've made one. Who knows what's going on behind closed doors? But this is a problem because this may mean that Israel takes it upon themselves to stop the development of a nuclear weapon in Iran, uh, you know, by any means possible. And considering the fact that the Iranians and the Russians are cozying up with one another, and China as well, that's a real problem. I mean, a regional conflict in the Middle East between Iran and Israel is not going to be a cakewalk by any means. And the U.S. could easily get drawn into such a conflict. And, you know, the U.S. military is likely far superior to the military of Iran or the military of Russia or even the military of China, although China probably has the numbers but the thing is that these conflicts going on in the Middle East, they're right in the backyard of Iran and China and Russia. This is their part of the world, and it's basically the exact opposite of our end of the world. So projecting power into that region is going to be very costly if we are called upon to do so, and it's going to be a very difficult thing. So even if we were to become victorious in such a conflict, the expense would likely be astronomical. And that's kind of like the scenario of Britain in World War One and Two. You know, they won both conflicts, but it essentially bankrupted them. And so, you know, war is not something that we want to engage in, especially at this stage of the game where we've got $30 trillion in debt and, uh, you know, rising inflation, almost double-digit inflation now in the U.S. Getting into a war is not going to fix that problem. In fact, it's going to make it a lot worse. And if we do, for whatever reason, get into conflict with China... 
it's going to make the economic effects of the Ukraine-Russian conflict look very minor by comparison because, you know, look around at the objects in your home or at the store and you don't see a whole lot of Made in Russia stickers. But Made in China is another story. So all those cheap manufactured goods that fill up the Walmarts and the Kmarts of the world and that you can buy on Amazon at dirt cheap prices, well, all that stuff's going to go away. And so... Hopefully we don't get involved in a conflict over there, but it appears that there certainly is a possibility of that. And it's not only China, it's also their proxy state of North Korea. North Korea now threatening to conduct more nuclear tests, and of course this is putting the South on edge. And they also just made an announcement over in North Korea on the 68th anniversary of Armistice Day of the Korean War. They've warned that there could be a second Korean War breaking out. And this is in response to military drills conducted between South Korea and the U.S. And so tensions are high all around the world. And I know that they've been high for a while, and it kind of makes you get a little complacent and think, well, you know, they've been ratcheting up tensions for years now. It likely won't come to anything because it would sort of be economic suicide for both sides. But the problem is, with the kind of brinksmanship that we're observing in Taiwan, for example, where... You know, China threatens severe consequences if Nancy Pelosi visits Taiwan and then she goes ahead with the visit anyway. And there's no guarantee that she will, but I think it's a lot less likely that she'll back down at this point. You, know, you can only roll the dice like this so many times before somebody makes a miscalculation and conflict is on. And it's kind of like World War I. You know, we had all of these systems of alliances and people with massive militaries poised to get involved. And then a seemingly minor event like the assassination of an Austrian heir to the throne leads to one of the bloodiest conflicts in human history. So, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen, but we already are involved in a proxy war in Ukraine, and that alone is going to cost a lot of money, and that alone is going to cause some inflation. But if we do get drawn into a bigger conflict, the consequences, both economically and geopolitically, are going to be tremendous. So let's hope that doesn't happen but let's also not ignore the reality of what's going on on the ground. And just like Zoltan Passar predicted back in March, we are seeing the world delineate itself into two rival camps. You've got the West, kind of the old guard, the financial centers of power, the old empires. And then you've got the East and the more developing nations, you know, Russia, China, Iran, South Africa's in that camp. And these countries, although they may not be as economically developed as the countries in the West, they have some things going for them. You know, they have a tremendous portion of the world's population. They have a tremendous portion of the world's resources. And this isn't something that we should take lightly. And it's something we should all be getting prepared for because, you know, if you see sanctions kick off against China in some kind of a conflict, that's going to be a lot more noticeable here in the West than what we've seen in Russia so far. And if we do get into a conflict like that, there's going to be tremendous inflationary pressures, not just from the amount of fiat currency that gets created to finance such a conflict, but also from the shrinking and dwindling supply of goods that can be purchased with that fiat currency due to our dependence on these nations for their manufacturing capabilities. So just something to be aware of as we move forward through these troubled times. And like I said, I'm getting my hands on some real money, some gold and silver inflation hedges that have stood the test of time. And it's not financial advice, but you might want to get your hands on some solid money too, if only as an insurance policy. So let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will catch you next time. Thank you all very much for watching. Smart Silver Stacker, out.